you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called to them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat and followed, and along with the hired men, followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. So along with most other things in life, there's always some sort of a backstory. Like Paul Harvey used to say, and now for the rest of the story. And we have to kind of back up a little bit to give the first reading the, pro, the full and proper context. Jonah is reluctant. He does not want to do what God is asking him to do. And he avoided it the first time and uh, was swallowed by a big fish. The point of all that is you can't run away from God and every time you try, you're going to run right into him. And so finally, Jonah decides that he better do what God is asking him to do. But he doesn't do it in the way that God asks of him. God wants Jonah to go through Nineveh and to declare that Nineveh is going to be overturned. Overturned. And Jonah decides to go through Nineveh using language that God did not intend. Jonah goes through Nineveh saying, 40 more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. It was not God's intent to destroy Nineveh. It was God's intent to overturn it. And so the difference in language means all the difference in result. And so Jonah goes through Nineveh with this half-hearted, I don't care attitude. And basically says, 40 more days and you guys are toast. And that is not what God intended. Now we need to understand that part of the back story is the number 40. Because in biblical, biblical numerology, the number 40 is not a literal number. It stands for two things. It stands for a period of testing, and it stands for a long time. Just like the Israelites were in the desert for 40 years. It was a period of testing. It was a long time. And so what God wanted Jonah to do is to go through Nineveh and to say, after a period of testing, Nineveh is going to be overturned, turned over. Just like you and I, turn over a new leaf every once in a while. We stop doing this, and we begin to do that. And the scripture says 
that when Jonah went through Nineveh with his half-hearted attempt to tell the people one thing, they believed him and they turned over. They changed their ways. And God saw that they changed their ways, that they had a change of heart. And if you read the entire book of Jonah, Jonah was very upset that the people repented. He wasn't happy about it. So it tells us something about our half-hearted approach and attempt to do one thing and the power of God who does something else. Now what's interesting about all of this number 40 and this period of testing that Jonah is proclaiming that God had him go through the city of Nineveh to proclaim that Jesus says in the gospel, the time is fulfilled. It's now. Things are going to be turned over. And if you go to the scripture and you look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, you will see clearly what God intends to to destroy so that things can be turned over. And the scripture says that the Son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came into the world and said the time is now. Things are going to be turned over. And that's why Paul says in the second reading, time is running out. Because we are still in this period of testing right now. We're still in that 40 days. That's the life we're living right now. So St. Paul says that we should be focused not on what the world is doing. We should be focused on what Christ is doing. That's our focus. Because what we see in the cross is what turns everything over. What we hear proclaimed in the gospel is the power of God's word that has the effect that Jonah's words did not. We're living in a time right now where so many people are so afraid. They're glued to their television sets and their mobile devices because they think or believe that everything that they've become accustomed to in the world they grew up in that provided them security and comfort is going away. And Paul says, the world as we know it is passing away. It is passing away. But not in the manner that you and I are afraid of. Because what St. Paul wants us to understand is what Jesus came to proclaim, that the time is now and things are going to be turned over. Things are going to be turned over. And they are even right now, at this moment, this very moment, right now, right here, turning over. The question is, what is my focus and what is yours? What are we paying attention to? Who are we listening to? If we have more focus on what's going on out there instead of what's going on in here, then we're not paying attention to what God wants us to pay attention to. One of the things that Jesus says in this Gospels, which he says more than anything else, 
Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Everything that you and I are afraid of, Jesus says, I have overcome. I have overcome. And we have been baptized into him. And so because he has overcome it, we in him are being turned over. The question is, who do we believe? What do we believe? Are we glued to our television sets, listening to those who we don't even trust anymore? Who do you believe? Who do you listen to? Who's giving you the straight skinny? It's right here. It's right here. Stop being afraid. Stop listening to what the world has to tell you. And pay more attention to what Jesus has to say. Because whether we realize it or not, through this period of testing, Jesus said the time is fulfilled. It's now. And things are being turned over. My brothers and sisters, that's good news. That's good news. I can't think of the last time I turned my television set on and heard good news. Let's make a pledge today to spend more time or as much time with the Word of God in prayer, focused on the Gospel of Jesus Christ and the Holy Eucharist as opposed to all of that nonsense that seeks to disrupt and rob us of our peace. Things are being turned over. 